Hello YouTube, it is TechOg. In this video, I'm going to be showing some new features of Crystallism. Crystallism is a remote spy and um, admin um, like tool that I have. It has admin commands and it has a remote spy. Uh, the remote spy is like the main feature of it, and it's what I'm going to be showcasing to you right now. So I have this test game where there's four options. There's dot fire server, coin fire server dot invoke server and coin invoke server and then below it here let me fix this a uh, load string uh ay 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 the internet editor is bad okay sorry about that um you can look at the cool animation Ooh, look at that so sweet anyway so there's these four and then there's a copy of these the difference between these and these the top and the bottom is that the bottom ones require a module script which it'll, which will be relevant in a minute. So uh, if you go to the most by tab, if you've seen Crystallism before, because I have made a video on this, if you want to go watch that one, it'll probably be linked in the description. You'll see there's a new button here called Copy Log Path. So each time a remote gets fired, it creates a new log. So you see I can create multiple of these logs. You see the count will go up. Obviously the arguments aren't changing, but you see there's multiple logs up here. So I have this Copy Log Path. Which what it'll do is it'll copy the path where it'll go to share that crystallism environment logs and then nine, which is because this is the ninth log, ninth time that uh, any remote's been called that it's logged, you know. Alright, so that's one of the features, copy log path. You can things you can do with this, oops, is you can table out for each shit with prints, which just prints um, for each uh, item. And you can see it has a function, the environment index, the script, the args, and then the actual text, which shows up in here, but with highlights. Then there's a the stack, and then a script 2, which script 2 I will talk about in a moment. I'll actually talk about it right now. So if I open up index, you can see that here is the module script I was talking about. You can open it up, and you can see... Uh, fire server index, fire server name call, invoke server index, invoke server name call. So you see it just one calls fire server with the remote and the argument and then the other just uses name call which is better by the way if you didn't know. Anyways so if you if I go down to these down here the bottom ones call these a couple times you can see that there's something different so if I copy log path and then I Loop through each one. You clear the console. You'll see script and script two are different. So why is this? Well, that's because this script is the script of function. So the dot the um like the environment of function dot script. While script two is just get calling script. So it's useful to have both of these because I think in most cases for me, it's more important to know where the actual fire server function is being called at. That's what the script will tell you. This is the one that happens uh, or that gets copied whenever you do copy script path. But it also can be useful to get the second script because this is essentially what's requiring on the module script. I'm not really sure how it works with like nested modules and nested scripts and whatever. Um, well, just nested modules. I'm assuming it goes back to the um, actual local script, but like the, the first one, but I'm not really sure. I haven't really gone through that. But I think it's important to have these two. But for me, the reason that it's a default for the one with the actual call because obviously, you know, the word invoke server is not even in here at all, but it is in this one, which I find to be more useful at times um, than the other one. So that's why um, it does the, the first script instead of the second one. And so in case you want to see the code for it, this is what I have. So obviously there's get calling script. This is script two. But then we have this little uh, whole pcall statement down here where first before it runs the pcall, it'll... Uh, get these variables calling function calling script 2 and stack so these are uh, the names are mixed up but uh, you can ignore that it doesn't really matter you just know that it goes to the p call it gets calling function using get info which is really useful because it, it just pretty much goes through uh, like a list of call of the functions that call this so it's like 
one, two, three, four, five, whatever, it just goes up, 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 up. The higher you go, the um, uh, the higher in the stack you go, I guess. Um, and then you know it just it gets the actual script through gitfm calling function dot scripts. And then I mean this doesn't need to be inside of this, but um, I can put that like here down there. Anyways, that is the video. Just a quick one showing a new update for crystallism because I haven't touched it in a while and I. You know, I, that was something I overlooked when I first made it. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya.